<laughs> so huge school. I've got down here 677 children. Nearly 700 nearly. children. We're three, four mentory. Um, yeah, a lot of children, which makes um, Opal somewhat challenging, but we've, 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 we've really come quite a way. And that, what's your playground like? I think you've got quite a big playground, don't you? Yeah, we have quite a big playground that goes around all the back of the uh, building. And then we have, we're lucky enough to have a field, um, which I'll speak about in a moment. Yep. And you're the curricular lead for play, is that right? That's right. I'm the curriculum lead for play. So hopefully I'll be able to give you some, um, um, some great tips that might help um, if you're starting on the, on the Opal journey. Fantastic. Right, I am going to, no further ado, she says, hopefully, yay. There we go. We are sharing the screen here. So I'm going to take myself off Spotlight, um, leave you up there, Greg, and take it away. Thank you, Kath. So, um, yeah, my name is Greg Cox. I'm the um, curricular play lead at Devonshire Primary School in Sutton. We have 700 children, nearly 700 children. We're a free for elementary school, so there's a lot of children playing at the same time. So I'm going to um, take you through my slides, so Kath, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, thank you, you're going to have to. Oh, right, so uh, yeah, here's our Opal Platinum Award. We were awarded this. Um, thank you, Neil, for awarding that to us. I hope Neil's there somewhere. Um, that was in December last year, but we were working on this um, through lockdown, actually, which was quite strange, having the children in bubbles. Um, trying to implement this local process, but luckily now we're back to full freedom, just how it should be. And I've entitled my presentation From Frustration to Freedom, which really quite sums up um, how we started out with our uh, lunchtime approach to how it has turned out. Thank you, Kath. So um, just a quick question for you. Would you enjoy lunchtime at this school? I'll just describe a little bit what it's like. Uh, we've got the picture on the left there of our field, the gate firmly shut, um, and that is only used in the summer term, really. And um, in the winter, you know, if the grass is wet or um, it's a little bit rainy, we wouldn't go up there. We actually had detentions of maybe up to an hour if you misbehaved at lunchtime, um, and you'd have to sit down and, and watch everyone else play. And then there's the seamlessly endless uh, football bands for where the staff are unsure whether um, a class is banned from football or not because they've not been behaving very well. I don't know if this sounds familiar to anyone out there. And those children that don't want to play football, um, there's my picture of the fish there. They're sort of, they're, they're, they don't really have a purpose. They're wandering around aimlessly, um, not really sure what to do. Um, so that was sort of what the situation was like um, here at Devonshire a number of years ago now. Um, we had other rules like, you know, don't go into the bushes, uh, don't go anywhere we can see you and definitely do not swing on those bars in the, in the, in the, on, the on the playground, um, the uh, play set that we normally have. Um, and um, what we realised when we looked at this was that 86% um, of the children in our school um, live in flats with limited access to outdoor space. So we, need, we knew we needed to change something. And... Um, and when we found out about Opal, we thought, yes, this is right for our school. This is just what our children need. And um, yes, thank you, Kath, if you wouldn't mind going on to our next slide. So I can't talk about everything about what we've done, but some lovely pictures here of some of the equipment that we, um, that we got for our school. Um, Freedom Friday was one thing we stole right from your book, Mike, I'm not going to lie. Um, some, things, some things are best stolen, right? And we really, really started with that. So what Freedom Friday is, I'll quickly explain. Um, we used to have children in the junior playground and the infant playground, but uh, one day we said, you know what, let's, we're starting Opal, let's let them mix and see their siblings, see their friends from other year groups and explore the whole playground. And you wouldn't believe how excited the kids were. They were like, can we do this every day? And we we're like, yeah, okay, all right, we're just trying it for one day first. And it wasn't long before we were doing Freedom every day and they were loving playing with the equipment across the whole playground. Uh, we've got some ties there, some space hoppers are so popular and making dens is such a popular, um, such a popular thing for the children to do. Um, yes, let's move on, Kath, thank you. So, oh, one of my favourite things, when I was a kid and, um, and um, when I was just looking back to previous presentations today, I was just thinking about um, my memory of my playtime when I was a kid. I loved climbing trees and that was something I want, really wanted as part of our local journey. So, 
we're very lucky to have a field and we don't just have a field we have a rectangular football football pitch sized field but we're very lucky to have um, some woodland area around the sides and we've got some climbable trees there so we let the children climb the trees and some of the things that um, we say um, to the play workers that we're maybe not quite used to this sort of style. We say, you know, you are allowed in the bushes. That's absolutely fine. The children are allowed there. We don't expect the play workers to see all the children at all times. That's in our policy. And as part of Opal, we wrote our play policy and um, we, we encourage secret spaces. You know, I went up to the field the other day and I found a, a, a little bush that I didn't even realise that children were hiding in. They were having such fun in there playing in the dirt. Um, so yeah, we encourage tree climbing. The children get such a lot out of it, hanging out in the trees, chatting in the trees. Um, it's such a great experience for them. Thank you, Kath. Um, but of course, you know, I, as a child, I love football and you can see our field there. There's one side of our field in the bottom left. Um, you know, freedom to choose. You know, if children want to play football, they can, but we have a dedicated play zone for that. They go up onto the field and they play in the center of the field. But, you know, there's other choices available as well. Here's some of our water uh, play area here. You've got some children um, <laughs> photo bombing there with their scooters. They've been scooting around the playground and lots of happy, smiling children um, enjoying playing with the water. And that is really up to the children. We let them choose. There are a few children that like to play football every day and that's totally fine. But equally, they have so many other choices if 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 they need to move from or if they want to move from any any activity to another thank you Kath. and freedom in the winter too now this was a little bit trickier to organize with 700 children it just isn't space for um um uh wellies to go outside uh, in the playground so we ended up coming up with a different solution so we have what we call uh, muddy days um, so whenever it's wet or, or the field is a little bit waterlogged, we make sure that we can still get children up there. Um, we ask children to bring in old trainers. We don't say they have to, they don't have to be wellies, um, old tracksuit bottoms or waterproof trousers. They bring them in in a bag, put them on their peg, and then uh, we'll announce to the children, it's a muddy day today. So bring out your bags, you get changed uh, outside at the start of lunch and you can go up on the field um, and play in the field uh, uh, to your heart's content. Um, and it's it's really improved my relationship with the uh, site manager because now he's happy that the mud is no longer coming into school because they're taking off their shoes um, before they come back. They're, they're switching back to their school shoes uh, before they come back into school. So that is uh, really pleased him. Thank you, Kath. I'm whizzing through these. Um, but obviously, freedom up to a point, uh, we actually um, have painted markers on the trees. Uh, where we think is appropriate for the children to climb to. Obviously, we don't want them climbing all the way up to the top of those trees. So we talk about that in our play assemblies and we discuss risks and we discuss the benefits of tree climbing. Here is one of the, on the picture on the right here, a lovely picture of um, the children came up with this. They got some white sheets. They were in our opal shed for a while, not really being played with. And then one day I came out and children have tied, tied them to the trees and made some swings. With the, with the white sheets, excellent innovation. I, I wouldn't have thought that myself, but we loved it. And we had children for the next two weeks queuing up, orderly queue to get a go at the swing. So um, lovely example there. Um, as a big school, obviously, it was a bit of a struggle um, to um, organize everyone coming in from lunch and we have staggered lunch times for infants and juniors. So we actually have the infants coming in a little bit earlier than juniors which as a young child, it's quite tricky to see children still carrying on playing while you have to go back into your lesson. So we had a little bit of a, a struggle with the year twos getting them back. So we, we, we put them in high-vis jackets just so we can quickly get them in and um, we can spot them. And that worked really well. Now they're, they're much better at coming in at the end of lunch. Um, what, one more thing we noticed uh, that worked really well, we, we tell the children this in play assemblies, you know, if you tidy up well, we have the tidy up time at the end of um, at the end of lunchtime, if you tidy up well, if you get quicker, you know, you get more playtime at the end. And the children really enjoy that challenge. And one real big benefit of Opal I found is um, the play workers have been trained to resolve conflicts. We've worked on that in our inset sessions and we've reduced the maximum consequence to 10 minutes timeout. And to be honest, they're rarely required now. The children are just so busy, they're so happy, they're, they're, so, they're doing so many different activity, doing so many things they're choosing, and um, we rarely have to um, implement any consequences. So that's been a major benefit. 
I think one final slide I've got for you all. And that's just the impact that we found. Happier children, they're engaging in purposeful play experiences on a daily basis. And we're not going in if it's wet play, we stay out, you get your coat, you go out. They're taking risks like climbing up those trees, getting in the barrels, or they love um, going down a little ramp, a little ramp we have in the barrels. Um, and we have met fewer arguments, fewer playground incidents, fewer behavior incidents. And that's really, really had a massive impact on life at Devonshire Primary School. So um, thank you for listening. Um, I hope that um, helped everyone out there. Um, how's that, Kath? Awesome. Oh, Miss Hayes, that was fantastic. I love your mud kitchen there. <laughs> yes. Is that really expensive? Did you have to pay like tens of thousands of pounds for that? We actually got a parent that helped for the, with that. Um, uh, I think a year one or year two parent. We actually have one behind that you can't see. Uh, they were sort of competing who could build the best mud kitchen between one of the parents. And they were great. We've got a sink there that cost us absolutely nothing. At the start of the Opal process, we had a um, collection week and we had parents bringing in old pots of pans. None of those, we didn't have to buy any of those. And we have lots of those things donated from parents.